Hi, this is Pete with Allen's Arsenal, and today I'm going to talk to you about replacing uh, your trigger and your AR with an aftermarket trigger. Today's trigger we're going to use is a Timney trigger. Uh, the reason why you might want to go ahead and do this, your standard trigger that you would find in most ARs is going to be somewhere in between a five to eight pound pull. If you want something a little bit smoother or if you want a single stage trigger, Timney also does offer them to where you can get a flat trigger, a different type of curve, or where you can even adjust it in and out left and right. So anyways, from there, we'll go ahead and start with the AR. First thing you want to do with it, just like any firearm, is go ahead and clear the weapon. So I've already gone ahead and put it on safe. Pull the charging handle to the rear with it, point it in a safe direction, check the chamber, make sure there's nothing in there. And from there, we can go ahead and start re removing the two pivot pins or two takedown pins. Take the upper, and then from there you go ahead and start working on the lower part itself. But for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you on this little display unit so that way you can see all the internal parts inside. <clears throat> Here's a standard trigger pack that comes in most AR triggers right here. So from here we've already obviously taken it apart, uh, taken it on safe. Generally, what you will have to do with most triggers is you will have to remove the selector switch. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start with removing the pistol grip. There's usually either an Allen screw or a flat tip screw inside. So we'll go ahead and start removing that. Generally, because I've done this enough, I would not remove the grip all the way. As you see, there's a spring right there that pushes up on a pin that holds the selector switch in either the fire or the safe position. I would just relax it enough, but for this, I'll go ahead and take it all the way out. And again, you see that pin, just set the part off to the side, there will be, or the, sorry, the spring, there will be a little pin. Go ahead and put the hammer all the way back. Remove your safety, it'll just slip right out. From there, you can go ahead and pull back on the trigger, ensuring not to allow the hammer to fly all the way forward and hit the receiver. You just take a punch and go ahead and push in on your trigger pins. Go ahead and just push them all the way through. Notice how, you, how I'm using my hand just to capture the pins so they're not just flying out and going onto the floor. You go ahead and remove your hammer. There goes the sear, and then there's the trigger itself. Just take all those parts, put them off to the side. You will need the two trigger pins again, and then with the selector switch and the pin and the spring for that as well. Again, here I have a Timney 667 uh, S. S is for small pin. Most ARs out there use a 154,000 pin diameter. Colt did from 1999 to 2009, go ahead and use a 170,000 pin, which is generally referred to as a large pin. They did this to just to try to prevent people from putting aftermarket parts out of uh, mil spec or LE police uh, rifles in their rifles, in other words, to convert them to full auto. Unless you have a Colt made during that time, generally all the other ARs out on the market are going to go ahead and have the one, the small pin. So with the Timney trigger, you'll have the trigger, you'll get a little Allen wrench, and there will be another set of set screws. And of course, it'll come with a, a sticker and a set of instructions. With the 667 trigger, what I'd like to point out real quick before we get started is notice that there are a set of set screws right here come protruding out the bottom. As you can see with this one, it is wound out just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and pull on the trigger to get the hammer to move forward and go ahead and wind that back up to where it's flat on the bottom. So you have your Timney 667 trigger. You go ahead and drop it into the receiver group. From there, you go ahead and take your selector switch. Go ahead and put it in place. <clears throat> If your screw or your 
your, your screw, your Allen screw falls out of place, you can generally use like a pair of hemostats or just a small pair of needle nose pliers to help guide it in place. Generally go ahead and put the spring into the hole at the top of the grip. Notice how it sticks out the bottom. And then take the pin and put it into the hole just underneath the selector. Now realize that this will not, this goes in on an angle. And I'll also notice right here that the, the spring itself is not lined up perfectly with the hole just yet to push up on that pin. So as I start winding in the screw, it will start moving the pistol grip a little bit forward. And if necessary, you could take a little punch or even the Allen wrench to go ahead and move that spring forward to where it sets in place properly below the pin while you finish winding in the screw for the pistol grip. Okay, once that's in place, you go ahead and take the trigger pins, put them in through the holes, either left or right, right to left. At this point, it does not matter. And then also from here, I'll go ahead and pull in on the trigger, allow the hammer to come forward again, ensuring that it's not going to go ahead and hit the receiver. You see where the two set screws are right below? What you'll want to do is go ahead and wind them in. I also do want to caution you at this time, if you do have a AR receiver that has a polymer or carbon fiber lower receiver that you will need to contact Timney when you buy the trigger and let them know that and they will give you a thin metal plate to put below the trigger so that way you do not push these set screws all the way through your receiver. Once you have those two set screws in place, you'll go back to your little package with your two smaller set screws. Go ahead and remove those. Ensure that they don't fall off the table. Put them on your Allen wrench. And generally what I do, as you see down here, is that you have the, the hammer springs on both sides. They're sort of covering the holes where the set screws will go. Usually what I'll do is I'll take the pair of hemostats or even a, a punch and I'll pick up the spring. I'll pick up the spring and put it either on top or over on the other side. And that way I can have easier access when I go to wind in this other set screw. And really all I'm doing is taking it to where it's snug on top of the first one to keep it locked in place. While I'm winding this in, I will go ahead and tell you that the Timney 667 does come from the factory. It's a non-adjustable trigger. It does have a three pound weight pull. Timney also makes other triggers. They have one that's for the AR-10s that are at four pounds. It does have a larger hammer in order to have enough mass properly striking that larger primer on the 308 cartridge. Okay, once that's snug, as you see, once again, I just go ahead and take the hammer spring, rock it over to the side where it is. You go ahead, 
bring your hammer back. Your pin should not fall out. Okay, and again, you can test the trigger before you put it back. And also, again, making sure it doesn't come all the way forward to hit the receiver, as it might possibly damage the receiver. So once you have the trigger in, simply just go ahead and lock the hammer back. Take your upper receiver. Put it back together, and there you go. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. And once again, thank you for watching Tactical Rifleman. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.